What's going on, everybody? It is I, Tony, back with more TT Bird Game Reviews here, and we're continuing with my Mission Impossible franchise review, Episode 2 or 90, Part 2. Two parts, the final part. Last time we took a look at Mission Impossible for the PlayStation, a game that was sort of based on the movie, but not quite the same time. And that game was pretty much shit from top to bottom, except for a couple things that were good. And you think, with the with, with a sequel coming out or another game coming out, you think they would improve on that. Unfortunately, well, I don't know. We got this one here, Mission Impossible Operation Surma, which takes place place between Mission Impossible 2 and Mission Impossible 3. So the PlayStation 2, Xbox, Nintendo GameCube, and Game Boy Advance that has an original story to it. By Atari SA, released on December 8th, 2003. Now let's get started. Now show of hands here. How many people came here expecting this game to be a great improvement over the PlayStation and Nintendo 64 game, based on the first movie? Come on, let's see those hands. A lot there I see, huh? Well, guess what? You're wrong! You're all wrong who raised your hands! This game is actually worse than, than, the, than the original game, and how can that be possible? Well, here is how. Take everything that was bad in the PlayStation game, put it in here with other problems, and make them worse, and you got Mission Impossible Operation Surma. I cannot believe this game is actually worse than the PlayStation game. Well, let's start here. The problems start when you play the game. First, we have the story. And the story is a little bit better, take place between Mission Impossible 2 and Mission Impossible 3, which is nice that we have a story that follows the movie storyline a little bit better than last time. But the story is very weak, right, dealing with arm dealers, kidnapped scientists, computer box? programs, and more. It's ahead. been done before, and it's been done ahead. better in other yeah, games. Hell, the story in the last Mission Impossible game was better than this, and that's sad if you ask me. When you get into the gameplay, we have the main issues. You have no idea what to do. You run around like a dumbass trying to figure out Even where you're supposed to go and how to advance. And this is all not done so well even more with the very cumbersome like controls that are very loose and out of control and a huge mess. Just one slight of the right asset that's sick to move the camera, it's like it's like a, a speedboat running around in circles out of control. And due to the cumbersome of some of the controls, what you hit the that? wrong button all the time. Even when you change the controls, it still feels like like a mess. It can even get you killed too. You have gadgets, a big variety in the gadgets, like a stun gun that disables the camera, so it really come in handy. A repel cord to help you reach high areas, and but not just with a camera. And more and more and more. You have your weapons as well and stuff and everything. But you know, the weapons are totally useless. Just like last time. You're gonna be re re revolving on your on your you your mean, your sort of. impossible fists once again to to punch the she foes and skittish. and take she them down stealth wise which can be cool and you can hide the enemies too which what? which adds Ethan some some okay. fun to it you couldn't do that in the last yeah, game except for like very rarely when you were using the face Kawako, maker huh? and that's Go a cool easy, feature she did the right thing. but you know she all right. the, yeah, you have these weapons okay. here and they're and they're even more you useless than they were last time sure you got your dark gun and stuff and you get, you get your little pistol and everything, you know, a lot of them are useless. Just use your fist in the most part, but yeah. You ha also have the face maker, but you very rarely use it, making it pointless. There are some fun to the gadgets, but due to the points of the gameplay, it makes them not very enjoyable. There are only five missions in this game, broken up into parts. And I know, like, um... This last time, like, the missions in, the, in Mission Impossible for PlayStation were broken up into parts. But here, it's like, it feels shorter. And the objectives change in each part, like last time, but all the missions feel the same with tedious elements added to the gameplay. There's features of dodging cameras, killing all the bad guys, hiding the bad guys, looking for documents, photographing people, and more. Sounds interesting on paper, but this work goes downhill, because the combat is not so good. And they, they, they either know where you're at most of the time, or, or just stupidly walk past you, and they'll spot you and stuff, and you know, you'll have to go... Keep we keep turning the alarm off every time they trigger the alarm or so because you know they'll they'll be constantly triggering that alarm. In fact, in the first mission, every time you shut the alarm off, it would turn back on because you missed the guard. It's like several feet away. He'll keep triggering that alarm even when you're nowhere near him. It's like it's like like he's so scared. He keep pressing the alarm like like he saw a monster or something like that. And you know, like much you can hide the bodies in the dark areas, which is cool, but. It, you will not get penalized if you don't hide them. I only made it up to the second mission, now it's me trying my best. I got to the part where it involves you taking pictures of a guard and the scientist without being detected, which would be no problem. But you have to fucking take clear pictures of the faces, which means you have to get up, 
close snap the pixel pictures while, while being shot and you're defenseless and you know you can, will get killed it will get detected if you're too close or if you run out of time or take too long the scientists will escape and boom that's it you're done and I gave up and said and said you know forget this this game sucks worse than last time at least the first game was beatable this one not so much the presentation looks okay the character models are detailed anime better than last time the cuts into detail with facial animation and more except the subtitles are delayed now sync a lot of times that they go too fast the environments while they look detailed they all look similar to one another the frame rate is smooth i'll say that their sound is okay to say the least voice acting is mostly good tom cruise is nowhere to be found and the replacement actor steve blum is not very good his voice is too deep and he sounds like he's trying way too hard to sound like michael ironside and david hater who, who were better who, they voiced him sam fisher and saw snake ving rhymes and john Polsey portrayed Luther Sickle and Billy Baird are here too in the lone bright spots of the cast and do a great job with the most part even though some of the lines sound kind of phoned in. Music is awesome, I love the music for sure, but that's all the game has to offer. It feels like like, like more of a cash grab than last time to cash in on the on the two movies, two and three. But before we even get, get even give this game a rating here, we gotta go to our TT Burger Pros and Cons chart here. The TT Burger Pros are Mission Impossible for the next gen consoles is here. Ethan Hunt is back. Vin Vin Rams and John Paulson reprise their roles as Luke Strickle and Billy Barton do a great job for the most part. Some cool gadgets to use throughout the game, decent graphics, decent sound, and now we have TT Burger Cons here. Story goes nowhere has been done before, only five missions are broken up into into two two sections. Unfair and unbalanced difficulty, enemy AI is stupid yet smart at the same time. The alarm keeps going off even when when the enemy is several feet away and keep resetting it, making it a chore. Some of the gadgets you have are pointless and running bar to use them. The stealth sections are pointless, you will not be penalized for them. Ethan Hunt's voice voice actor actor is not very good. He's terrible. I mean, not, nothing against him and stuff like that. Nothing, nothing, nothing against Steve Blum or anything, but you know his voice does not fit Ethan Hunt at all. It feels like a, like a cash in on the second and third movie, and it's overall garbage. So that's why my final thoughts for this game, Mission Impossible Operation Sermon gets a 1.5 out of 10. I don't even know how certain sites gave like a 7 or something, but that doesn't deserve a 7 at all. It doesn't deserve it. And that's it for episode 290 of my TT Burger Game Reviews. Stay tuned, we'll, we'll have more coming on the way, either a Master Game Review or another episode. Find out next, that's all I gotta say. And also, stay tuned. May, the month of May will be Star Wars month, so I got to have some goodies there planned for Star Wars month coming up. But all I gotta say is Tony, peace and out, have a good day, and see you all in the next episode. Feel free to check the other videos on this channel, and subscribe, and give it a like, and comment down below. That's all I gotta say. Take care, everybody. Have a great day. I've been messing around with this girl for a minute. She just came down in the summer for a visit. We just write it now in the moment so we live it. I've been okay.